My dad found his biological parents and it turns out they've been searching for him for 56 years. I'm not sure this is the place to post this, but I just want to get my excitement out somewhere so I figured that that counts as getting off my chest. Shout out to r slash, who helped me discover this subreddit. As you would expect from the title, my dad, M56, was adopted at birth. He was raised in eastern Canada and never really searched for his birth parents. The people who raised him are his parents to him and he loves them very much. They have always been amazing grandparents to my sister, F19, and I, M22. All he had from his birth parents was a letter which told him he was born out of love, but they could not support him when he was born. So when my sister decided to get him a genetic test for Christmas, it was purely with the intention to find out what ethnicity we all are and the thought of finding his birth parents didn't even cross our minds. Eventually, when we got his results, we were surprised to find the names of two people with perfect genetic matches to my dad. He had the option to reach out to them, so he wrote them each an email and just waited for their responses. Almost immediately, his biological dad, who I'll call Jim, not his real name, responded. He said how excited and happy he was to have found my dad and how he was looking for him for so long. My dad, who is usually an emotionally reserved man, was curled up on the couch grinning as he was texting Jim for the first time. I was still in shock from the news, but was so happy to see my dad even happier than when I graduated uni. Soon thereafter, he also received a message from his biological mom, Debbie, not her real name. By talking to them both, my dad learned the story of his birth and I think that it's absolutely wild. Debbie is the daughter of an Australian mining engineer and they all moved to Canada for his work when she was in high school. Later on, they moved to the Midwest where she met Jim at the age of 17. They were high school sweethearts and were thinking of marriage after they graduated, but then Debbie got pregnant. This being the 60s, this was a huge deal. Her dad was furious and sent her back to Canada to give birth and arranged a private adoption as he knew of a couple who were trying to have a kid, my grandparents. Once she gave birth, she was able to let Jim know that she was being sent back to Australia. They never saw each again for the next 40 years. Jim apparently was only able to move on once he received a letter over five years later from Debbie, saying that she got married. Eventually, he got married too, and they moved to the West Coast, but his wife got into a terrible car crash and lost the use of both legs and one arm, so they were never able to have kids. Debbie had three daughters in Australia, the oldest of which is seven years younger than my dad. They saw each other for the first time around 12 years ago, as they reconnected on Facebook and Debbie happened to be taking a trip to the west coast of America. Both Jim and Debbie had always wanted to keep my dad, and so they tried for decades to find him. But my province apparently is one of the hardest places in the world to find adoption information, especially since my dad only received his birth certificate at his baptism, so their names were not on it. Jim had essentially given up trying to find my dad until genetic tests became popular. He asked Debbie to take every single one, and he did the same, about five years ago, in the hopes that one day my dad would take one. When he received my dad's message, he immediately wrote to Debbie, I found him. Since then, we have had several calls with Jim and his wife and they are absolutely lovely. We are their only family since they don't have kids and I couldn't be happier. At the end of the month, we'll be flying to the west coast to meet them. It has been harder to talk to Debbie as Australia is so many hours ahead of us, but she also is so kind and an absolute joy to talk to. I haven't met my three new aunts yet, but apparently one lives in London. It's crazy to think that I might have been within a few kilometers of her the few times I've visited. I also have five new younger cousins. A couple of them are huge fans of Japanese culture, so they're ecstatic to hear that they have half Japanese cousins. My mum is Japanese Canadian, so my sister and Elle are both half. We hope to visit them one day in Australia, but we might all meet up in Japan next year. I don't know how to end this, I am still processing everything. It's absolutely incredible to have my family grow so much, but also a little overwhelming. I'm so happy for my dad for Jim, and for Debbie, and I'm so excited to get to know them better. I hope I get to meet my new cousins soon too. I feel so incredibly lucky that this happened, seemingly against all odds. My dad was initially raised francophone, so it's a miracle that they even speak the same language. Anyways, thank you so much for taking the time to read through this, and my apologies for how long this post ended up being. I might post an update after I meet Jim and his wife. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Update, one month later. First of all, Thank you so much to everyone who left such kind and heartfelt comments on my first post. It's incredible hearing all of your stories. To those who were concerned that we would abandon my grandparents that I grew up with, that is most definitely not the case. They were the people I grew up with and I absolutely love them to bits, although only my grandmother is still with us. All the incredible times I've had with her growing up are so much more important than blood and I can't comprehend the stories I read where people forget about their adoptive parents or grandparents when they find their biological ones. I won't recap my previous post here because I'm lazy ha. Huh? So, we just got back from visiting Jim and his wife, who I'll call Mary, not her real name, 
on the West Coast and it was one of the best experiences of my life. We spent a week in their city and got to experience so much with them. Our first time meeting them in person was very emotional and felt very surreal. We spent the whole day looking through my dad's and our old photos, basically catching Jim up on everything that he has missed over the past 56 years. We also got to see so many of his and Mary's old photos too, which was very cool. We went to a park near their house and on the walk, I heard Jim whisper my son with a massive smile across his face. Throughout the week, we explored their city and saw so many cool sights and tried so much delicious food. Mary knows her city so well and it was great to see her favorite spots all around the city from food carts to gardens to museums. We all went to an incredible Japanese-American museum and Jim and Mary absolutely loved it, they were very keen to learn about the internment during Will and said that they knew a bit about it before, but now it feels so personal. We went on two hikes with Jim, Mary wasn't able to come because she is in a wheelchair. It's so cool to have such an active and outdoorsy grandfather who was able to go on such long hikes. He taught us some foraging tips and told us stories from when he used to camp for years on end. Both he and Mary are very spiritual, so he also told us great stories from meditation retreats they've done. He's even tried psychedelics, so he's definitely the cool grandpa. I won't go into precise details of places we went, but it was great exploring such a cool part of the world with amazing people. We were all very sad when the trip was over and we had to leave. I've gained two new grandparents on the West Coast and I couldn't be happier. And they said that they've gained two grandchildren, I'm so glad that they see us as such. Mary told me her greatest regret in life was not being able to have children and grandchildren, but now she does. This has been such a transformative time in our lives and I think it's incredible Jace at how many people are so much happier now because my sister just happened to get my dad a DNA test. This is just the beginning of our relationship with our new grandparents and I am so excited. Now we have to figure out a way to go to Australia to meet Debbie. Whenever that happens, maybe I'll make another update. Until then, I hope you all have a lovely day and thank you so much for taking the time to read our story. Story 2. I just found proof that my pregnant wife has relapsed. Hi. I'm going to put a trigger warning here because this contains mentions of drug use. My wife is addicted to heroin. I said it. I created this account just to be able to admit this somewhere. I have a hard time saying it even though I've been to many NAR and on meetings. I used to be able to say it easily, back when I was seething with anger toward her the first time we did this song and dance. I have a regular Reddit account that I sometimes post in a parenting sub on and I don't really want this tied to my account. Maybe I will post about it there when I'm ready, but this isn't something I readily share or am ready to share. I thought I was past having to talk about this all the time or think about it every single day. When I went through this with her the first time, there was a period where I probably only really talked to other loved ones of addicts because they were the only people who could understand what I was going through. I'm sorry to say I've lost touch with all of them. I've just been sitting here on my couch crying for 15 minutes. I felt like she's been off the past few days. She tell us sleep early tonight, so I took the opportunity to search the house. I found her supplies hidden in various places. I already knew, but I needed the proof. So I tore the house apart until I found proof. She strategically placed the items in different places, not all together. I feel oddly vindicated, since she kept assuring me she hadn't taken anything. It starts to make you feel crazy. In a weird way I wanted to find proof, just so I wouldn't feel so crazy anymore. On the other hand, I didn't want to find anything. She has a long history of drug use, mainly pain meds and heroin. It started when she was a teenager and was prescribed pain meds after a bad injury. She was a normal girl then, not into anything bad or illegal, not hanging around with people who did drugs, not somebody you'd think would wind up a heroin addict by the time she got to college. She got hurt playing a high school sport. She got addicted and started buying pills on the street until that became too expensive and she turned to heroin. I didn't know her then. I met her when she was 26 and she'd been clean for only about 6 months, she'd been clean off and on for years, but only for short times. She shouldn't have been dating me, or anyone for that matter, since they generally advise not dating anyone for a year when you're in recovery. I've never been a drug user. I knew very little about this world before meeting her. She didn't tell me about it until we'd been dating for probably a month or so. It was a huge shock. She seemed totally normal, so sweet, so pretty and healthy looking, had a good job, was smart and just seemed together. We got married a year after meeting. I've kicked myself so many times for being so stupid, so unrealistic. I loved her so much, still do but now my love feels polluted or tarnished. We wanted kids but decided to wait a while. I at least realized she needed to be in recovery for a longer period of time before we took that step. She got pregnant after we'd been married about three years. She'd been clean for nearly five years and things in our lives were going great. My career was going so well. Her life was back on track, she was doing really well and being promoted at work. We had a dog that she doted on. We bought a new house. It was early on in her first pregnancy when I discovered she was using again. 
it came out that she'd started using again shortly before getting pregnant. We separated legally and lived separately as well, with me paying for everything. She continued to use heroin for months while pregnant, but finally entered an outpatient program for pregnant women. So I'm really rambling now, sorry. She followed the instructions during the later half of her pregnancy, was under a specialist care, had to take prescribed opiates since quitting cold turkey while pregnant can be more dangerous, but eventually got clean from everything within a few months of our child's birth. By some huge miracle our baby was born pretty healthy, small but within normal range. She suffered from very mild neonatal abstinence syndrome, with mild symptoms that lasted a few days. It was still excruciating to watch her endure, but it could have been much worse. I had primary custody and still lived separate from her, but she had regular contact with the baby, always supervised. She did everything she was told to do, passed all the drug tests, went to every meeting. That was four years ago. Initially I didn't plan to stay married to her. I was disgusted by what she did while pregnant with our child. I'm still disgusted by it but don't think about it like I used to. Over the past four years we have slowly repaired our relationship and marriage. Again, things have been going great. She made a huge effort. She was sticking with her recovery program and really seemed dedicated to it. She got really into whole body health, physical and mental, and seemed like the best version of herself I've known. This pregnancy wasn't planned. She's about 12 weeks pregnant with our second child. She was supposedly on birth control. I was scared. Her being pregnant again was giving me some sort of PTSD. We had the talk early on. I couldn't deal with what she put me through last time. And if she was tempted to do anything she shouldn't or if she did it just one time to please tell me. It'd be better to tell me than to hide and lie about it. It wasn't until this week that I knew something was off. There's a certain look in her eyes, her voice changes, her mannerisms change, even her smell changes. I can just see the smallest signs of when she's used any amount of something. I swore I would never let myself be as oblivious as I was the first time around. She's not been nodding out or anything like that in front of me, but I just knew. She's been getting home earlier than me due to some classes she's taking for a job-related certification. I think she's using during that gap and it's sort of worn off by the time I get home but the signs are still evident enough for me. I haven't woken her up. I wanted to. I wanted to scream at her. Instead I just sat in the living room and cried. I don't know how I survived this the first time, but I don't think I'll survive it a second time. Update, 4 days later. I posted recently about discovering my wife has relapsed on heroin. She's 12 weeks pregnant with our second baby, although this one wasn't planned. I'm having a pity party tonight so what better to do than post here? But really, I'm not ready to share with our family and friends yet. I will not be enabling her by covering up for her. I just want to get my ducks in a row. I know I'm not really alone but for some reason late at night and days like this I feel like the loneliest person in the world. My parents know that she relapsed because I told them. The day after I found my wife's drug gear hidden throughout the house I immediately moved our four-year daughter and myself to my parents' house. Yeah, I know in an ideal world she'd be locked out of our house, but doesn't work that way when she's also legally an owner of the house. Plus, one thing I learned the first time around when I was dealing with her addiction is that I can really only control my actions slash reactions. Trying to control her will only drive me crazy. So the easiest I, fastest, most stress-free way to get my daughter out of that setting was to quickly move is into my parents' home. I am planning to go get a truckload of our things later this week. I've informed her family that she's relapsed and that I've moved out of the house. They can do with that information what they want. I filed for divorce today. Luckily I have a friend who is a lawyer, not family law, and he was able to set me up very quickly with a good family law attorney. Well, I shouldn't say it's officially filed because there are still a few paperwork steps to be done but it's imminent and in good hands. After meeting with the attorney I went to be car and sobbed like a baby. I admit I cried for a good hour tonight too. I'm not usually a crier like this. I'm not ashamed to admit I've been doing a lot of it lately. Otherwise, I'm full of rage. I'm angry at her and angry at myself for giving her another chance. I'm angry because it makes me feel like a fool. When she lies to me and acts as if I'm some idiot who can't clearly see all of the signs and how high she is right there in front of me I get so mad that I have to remove myself because I don't know that I can control myself. I'm sad for her, for me, for our daughter, for this unborn baby she has mother agreed to abort. It's really fucking depressing when you're trying to convince your wife to abort your child because she's such a mess. I should have divorced her just as Eld planned to do after our daughter was born. We were already legally separated for a while and it would have been easy to just push that in through to an official divorce. It's like I can't breathe. Then there's the whole issue of our daughter. Courts don't automatically strip somebody of custody because they're on drugs. She won't completely lose access to our daughter. She may even get unsupervised access to our daughter. What am I supposed to do then? I left all of her drug supplies on the table with a note for her to find when she got home, after my daughter and I had already left. Then I went over there today. 
I actually went to get some of my personal belongings and she was there in the middle of the day sleeping in bed when she was supposed to be working. I lost it. Nothing physical. Just my temper. I asked her how she liked my note. She was clearly high. She denied it. I found proof right there in the bathroom. She still tried to deny it. She said she doesn't have to abort our baby if she doesn't want to. So she's going to put us through this again? I told her exactly what I think about her and I left. I felt bad and there's part of me that wants to help her but emotionally I don't think I can. I have to remove myself. I can't get sucked in again or I won't be able to be a good dad to our daughter. And FYI by sucked in I mean just sucked into the emotional turmoil, the constant worrying, the taking everyone on by myself for her sake. I'm not a heroin user and have never tried the stuff and never will. Anyway, I'm glad to have my daughter because I feel like she's this positive light keeping me going right now when I really don't want to keep going. I know I'm making the right decision to divorce, but it doesn't feel good right now. I feel like my life just imploded overnight.